Hello! Let us talk about interaction of two magnetic dipoles. There are many systems where we can observe interacting magnetic dipoles. Here I want to talk about the magnetic dipoles originating from particle spins. As an example, let us consider a water molecule. It has an oxygen atom. It also has two hydrogen atoms. The distance between hydrogen atoms is on the order of one angstrom. The hydrogen atoms contain protons and, as we know, they have spin one half. The proton have also magnetic moments. Hence, these magnetic moments interact with each other via a magnetic field which is created by them. Interaction – magnetic dipolar interaction between protons. Another example is a system of chemical radicals with unpaired electron spins and corresponding magnetic moments. Let's take nitroxide radical. If we have a pair of such radicals, then there is a magnetic dipole-dipole interaction between their unpaired spins. There exist an experimental techniques which can detect the magnetic dipole-dipole interaction between radicals which are at the distance of 10 to 100 angstrom. This technique is based on the electron paramagnetic resonance EPR. We will keep such system in mind when we talk about magnetic dipole-dipole interaction in this video. Now the question is, what is the Hamiltonian of magnetic dipolar dipolar interaction? I will start the derivation of this Hamiltonian from the point where we already know the vector potential made by a magnetic dipole and the energy of the magnetic dipole in an external magnetic field B. The vector potential is given by the formula here mu0 is the magnetic constant, mu is the value of the particle magnetic moment and r is the distance to the point where we look for the vector potential and the energy of a magnetic dipole in an external magnetic field P is given by. OK, let's use this information for the further steps. OK, let us take a closer look on the vector potential. If we have a spin with a magnetic moment mu at the origin of the coordinate system, Then the vector potential made by this spin magnetic moment at the point R can also be written as. Here we have a cross product of operator nabla with the uh, uh, magnetic moment mu divided by the absolute value of the distance to the point R. Just to remind you, mu zero or vacuum permeability is from Electrodynamics, we know that the vector potential A is responsible for a magnetic field B determined by another cross product. Using these two formulas, we obtain which can be rewritten as here we obtain a vector triple product. This product can be handled using non-formula from vector calculus. 
such a cross product of three vectors a b and c is equal to the explanation of this formula can be found for example by searching on internet typing a uh, triple vector product okay let us associate uh, this operator nabla with vector a this operator nabla with vector b and this magnetic moment with vector c then we can directly apply our auxiliary formula it gives us an expression for the magnetic field B made by the magnetic moment mu. Here we obtain the magnetic field, which is basically an action of a vector differential operator, which is in the brackets on the inverse distance. Okay, let us now imagine that the magnetic field is created by the magnetic moment mu1. B of mu1 looks like this. And this magnetic field acts on the magnetic moment mu2. Here is the distance vector r. The energy of the magnetic moment mu2 in the magnetic field of the magnetic moment mu1 can be written as here magnetic field b this one is determined by the a formula which i derived above if we insert this expression for the magnetic field b we will obtain Hence, we have obtained a formula for the interaction of two magnetic moments. This formula still needs to be simplified and transformed. Having this expression, we can distinguish two cases. The first case is when the position of the first and the second magnetic dipolar moments, mu1 and mu2, are well separated in space. And the second case is when the mu2 can be at the position of the magnetic moment mu1. This can happen in quantum mechanical systems, and I will come to such case later. Okay, let's start with the first case. R is larger than zero. Then the second term in the energy expression will vanish. This can be shown by direct calculation of nabla square action on 1 over r. Which is equal to 0. Hence, only the first term in the bracket in the expression for the energy survives. And we obtain. This can be written further as, which give us. Hence, we can write the expression for the magnetic dipole-dipole interaction as. This formula is frequently used in magnetic resonance. Okay, let us analyze this formula. If we compare this expression for magnetic dipole-dipole interaction to the expression of Coulomb interaction of two charged particles, It is more complicated, where the Coulomb interaction is determined by the distance and two charges, which are scalar values. Here we have to define two vectors for magnetic moments mu1 and mu2, and also the vector connecting them. This requires definition of nine parameters to determine energy of interaction between two magnetic moments. Here we consider an important special case when both magnetic moments mu1 and mu2 are oriented along the z-axis of a coordinate frame and the angle between the z-axis and the distance 
vector is equal to theta. In this case, the expression for the interaction energy can be simplified significantly, taking into account that the scalar product mu1 with r is equal to and the scalar product mu2 with r is also equal to the product of the absolute value of mu2 and r and cosine theta. With this we obtain. Here we see that the energy is proportional to the magnetic moment magnitudes mu1 and mu2 is inversely proportional to the r to the power of 3 and it also determined by the angle theta via this uh, function 1 minus 3 cosine square theta. Let us remember this expression. Here I would just like to mention that a very similar expression can be obtained for the energy difference between the energy levels of a system of spin pairs, which I have mentioned at the beginning of this video. For instance, if we put a water molecule in a strong magnetic field B, like it is shown on the figure, here we have the vector B aligned with the z-axis of the coordinate system, and the angle theta is the angle between the magnetic field B and the distance vector R. It turns out that the energy of the photon which is emitted or absorbed due to proton spin state transition can be described by the expression delta e is equal to h Planck constant multiplied by in the bracket nu zero plus nu bar multiplied by 1 minus 3 cosine squared theta in a good approximation. Of course, this photon energy does not follow directly from the formula for the energy of magnetic dipole-dipole interaction shown here. Some additional steps including quantum mechanical magnetic moment operators and Hamiltonians are required to determine transition energies. By the way, there is another my video describing the spectra of the system if they emit photons with frequency given by such formula. This video is called Peak Pattern Doublet Enema and EPR Spin Dipolar Spectra. Now I would like to go back to the point where I derived this expression for the energy and assumed that the distance r is larger than zero. Here I want to consider the second case when r can go to zero. This might happen in an atom when, for example, mu1 is created by a nuclei and mu2 is made by nearby electron. With non-zero probability density at the point of the nuclei. Let us assume we know the wave function of this electron. Psi e of r is the wave function of electron. Then we can calculate the expectation value of energy of the electron nuclear interaction energy as 
averaged e is equal to the integral over the whole space and under the integral we have the wave function electronic wave function and the expression for energy which we just inserted here if we calculate this integral it will give us some value however i am not interested in the calculation of this whole integral i just want to know a part of it when the integration is performed in a small volume near the coordinate origin where the nucleus is located we choose here a sphere with the radius r then we calculate such a limit since we have a singularity under the integral here this integral is not equal to zero it is also not infinite in fact it has a finite value i will briefly show you how it can be calculated first of all since we reduce the integration volume to zero point we can pull out the electron wave function out the integral and take its value at zero point in this way we obtain this integral can be calculated by substituting volume integration by an integration over the sphere surface which is well known in vector calculus i will skip the details of this integration and write the final result hence we have obtained an energy which is proportional to the probability density at zero point and to the product of both magnetic moments mu1 and mu2 Remarkably, we can obtain the same results if we calculate the integral over the whole volume from, from such function which I have written under the integral. It can be easily proven if we remind ourselves the formula for the Laplacian action on the inverse distance. With this result, it makes sense to change the shape of this formula a little bit we'll write it as it now consists of two terms the first term is called the dipolar interaction term and the second term is called fermi contact interaction With this, I would like to finish the consideration of the second case. Also, I would like to remind you the main result, the main formula which was obtained during this video presentation, which gives us magnetic dipole dipolar interaction. With this, I would like to finish and thank you for watching the video.